Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about homogeneity of variance. So here's the outline. I'm going to go through some terminology first. Then I'm going to very briefly remind everyone what variance is. I'm going to answer the question, what is homogeneity of variance? How can it be tested? Why is it important? Some recommendations? And then some references. So first, some terminology. When people use the word homogeneity, they mean the same. Conversely, when they use the word heterogeneity, they mean different. So homogeneity of variances means the same thing as equality of variances. And people in uh, statistics tend to use both terms about equally, homogeneity of variances and equality of variances. So variance. Variance represents the average square deviations between a group of observations and their respective mean. It's a measure of spread. And this is the formula. So the sum of the differences between an observation and its mean squared divided by the number of observations minus 1. In statistics, we found that the uh, variance is uh, a better estimate of the population variance when we use n minus 1 rather than n. Uh, and that's the formula for variance. I'll also note that uh, if you square root variance, then you get the standard deviation, which is sometimes represented either by just an S or an SD. Why is it important? Homogeneity of variance is important because it's a common assumption across several statistical analyses, including the t-test and the analysis of variance, for example. It's also useful for testing meaningful hypotheses as well. So in addition to testing assumptions, which tend to be not very interesting, uh, it can also be used to test uh, meaningful specific hypotheses relevant to variances. So sometimes you might be comparing the um, variability associated with the concentration of a various element that you're getting from two different suppliers. And so if one supplier is giving you uh, uh, variance, a greater variance in the concentration of the supply, then that's um, a meaningful uh, question to be answered. And I'll, I'll show another meaningful example in a minute. Here's what homogeneous uh, variances look like uh, in a pictorial form by just like looking at the distribution. So this is the level of spread that you can see in this distribution, which has a variance of 5, and this distribution has a variance of 5. When we look at heterogeneous variances, usually the samples look like something, for example, like a variance of 4. But in this case, the variance is a 9. And we can see that the spread in the distribution is much larger. Here's heterogeneous variances in terms of an example that can be quite interesting. In this case, uh, this is a fictional example that I've just applied numbers to. The variance is 169 for the smaller distribution, or the distribution that has less spread, less range. And then the larger var uh, variance distribution of 289, we can see the spread going from all the way out here and out to there. Now, why this is interesting in some cases, that if you want to look at the tails of both distributions, uh, it, I'll note that the means are the same. But in the tail with the, uh, with the less variance, only 2.5% have a mean IQ score of greater than 130. So in this case, both distributions have the same mean. You can see that the distributions would have a mean of 100 here. But in the smaller variance distribution, the mean of uh, the IQ 130 and above corresponds to only 2.5% of the sample. But for the other distribution with a variance of 289, we can see that 7.5% of the sample has an IQ greater than 130. And conversely, uh, people with an IQ of less than 70 uh, would also be greater, there'd be greater representation in the larger variance. So in a sample with larger variances, you can expect a greater, pe greater numbers of people at the extremes of the distribution. And that can have important social implications. So for example, in IQ, if a job requires high levels of IQ, 130 or above, you might expect you know, high levels of executive management or nuclear physicists or professors, high level, uh, high level occupation jobs that require high levels of IQ, uh, if there is a difference between groups, you would expect a larger percentage of people to be represented simply because the distributions are different, but the means are actually exactly the same. So this is more like a 3 to 1 case here. 
for every third, for every three people that have an IQ 130 in the largest